This video brought to you by jadedpainting.com. If you need your miniatures painted to a tabletop standard, check out jadedpainting.com. Hey everyone, welcome to another painting tutorial. As always, my name is Jay, and today I'll be showing you how I painted up this Crix Kraken, one of the colossal models for War Machine. So I began with the model primed with plate mail metal from Army Painter. If you don't have plate mail metal, I recommend priming it black and then just coating it with a base coat of any metal color you have, such as bolt gun metal. I then started on the undercoating of all the rust areas of the model using a one-to-one -one mix of Kador Red base and Quicksilver. And what I'm going to do is using an airbrush, I'm going to spray all of the areas in which I want a rust effect to be done on, and then we're going to coat up these levels and then produce a chipping effect, thus giving it a really old, worn out, rusted out appearance, which is what the, the Cricks kind of stand for in War Machine. And as you can see, I painted all of the, the front end of the Kraken, as well as the front ends of the legs, leaving the parts in the center to be silver, in which we will later do a wash over and uh, give them a really old, worn out appearance. I highly recommend using an airbrush for this step because it saves a lot of time and produces a nice, even coat over all these areas and saves you a lot of time. But uh, if you don't have an airbrush, I recommend diluting the, the paint greatly and just uh, making sure to get a very nice coat over all of them with very little brush strokes, which we'll show later on. As you see here, I'm going over all of the top end of it and the sides as well, because I want to get a lot of areas covered with rust. So after the base coat had dried, I then, once again using an airbrush, I sprayed on a coat of heavy chipping fluid from AK Interactive. And what this does is it kind of acts like um, very similar to hairspray in the sense that you can spray it on, cover it with coats of paint, and then chip it away later with a moist brush, producing a chipping effect. I highly recommend using heavy chipping fluid from AK Interactive as it is acrylic and it is very nice and you can get very easy control over it using an airbrush. And I'm just spraying the areas in which I want to later apply a chipping effect to, which this red rust will then appear through it. Once again, this step can be applied using a standard brush as opposed to an airbrush. I just use an airbrush because it saves you a lot of time and it's very easy to do. When the heavy chipping fluid was dry, I gave it a significant amount of time to dry. I then went over all these areas with Menoth White Highlight, which is a very nice white color, once again from P3 Privateer Press Paints. And the goal is to build up a gradient of whites and grays over these areas and then to produce the chipping effect and then later give them a wash to produce a really old, worn out, dirty appearance. So I went over all the areas, as you can see here, I'm giving a very nice, even coat with an airbrush once again of this Menoth white highlight. When using the, the P3 paints, I still had to dilute them very much with uh, a thinner. I used Vallejo airbrush thinner for all of my P3 dilutions. And with a little bit of thinner, it really does go very well through the airbrush and produces a really nice 
painting effect. It is okay to leave a little bit of the red rust appearance in the crevices and the edges as later with the, the tint it will produce a really nice old effect. And after the first white highlight is done, I went over with a second white, Moro white, which is a little bit brighter of a white. And for these, I just tried to get a little bit to highlight the edges and to make sure that it gives a little bit of shade or shaded appearance in the crevices and recesses. That way there's a little bit of a gradient of white and then I'll go over it with a little bit of gray in the crevices to produce just a little bit of variation and some, some shading over the model. That way you don't end up with a re really one-dimensional appearance which is very easy to do when you're painting with whites or blacks. You want to incorporate some grays thus to give some, some tonal variation in the model. So as you can see here, I'm just going and trying to highlight the areas beside the crevices just to make them stand out and afterwards you can see that they really do pop a little bit more on the model. And then I'm repeating the step on the legs. So here's what the model looked like after applying the whites. As you can see there's a bit of variation and you can easily see the divots and crevices on these white areas. So next, once again to give it some more variation, I then applied a gray. I decided to use iron hall gray and spray various coats of it, uh, focusing once again on the recesses and the crevices and the parts close to the edges. And I repeated the step on the legs, focus in areas that you would li like to be shaded, such as the inner parts or those uh, facing downwards.
as you can see after I'm done my first layer I'm just going a little bit more in the crevices and just give it a little bit more darker of an appearance on them. And with this step nearing completion, we can turn our attention to producing the chipping effect on this area, as well as giving a wash to age all the white and make it look a really dirt, dirty tinted look. So thank you very much as always for watching this video. Please like the video, comment in the comment section down below, and subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so. It really does help a lot. And when you're ready, click on the link below to go to part two of this War Machine painting tutorial.